Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And this is the protest update. Nigerians have poured into the streets in major cities across the nation to protest against economic hardship, despite government's last-minute push to prevent the demonstration. Although the protest has been suspended, and we're hearing that there might just be another one on October 1st, if the you know concerns are not being addressed now joining us to have a conversation on all of this is dr omashola deji he's a political scientist and charles ideho is a broadcaster and communication strategist good morning gentlemen thank you for joining us thank you good morning good morning all right um so i'll start with you charles i know that you know the protest has happened a lot has happened there are you know journalists that have even been attacked as well and people who have also lost their lives and all of this but i want to hear from you what has been your take on all of this on the protests in general okay first uh, let me say that uh, the protests um, were avoidable because if you pray um the current government had um, you know, moved swiftly to assuage the feelings and then the grievances of uh, those who organized the protests. Uh, it, it could have been, it could have been avoided, as I said. But again, we are here, the protests are here, and then people are already registering their grievances, registering their protests, and then of course protesting against uh, what they see to be um, I mean, uh, policies that have no human faces, uh, people uh, not uh, getting the best of life, things uh, getting more expensive every day you can imagine that uh, I, I can i could never have imagined in my life that a uh, time will come in nigeria where a tumor of young will be sold for ten thousand naira. Mm. i mean that's where we are and that's the reality so i i suppose that the government actually didn't handle it well because all you kept hearing was that we're doing this we're doing that we're doing this we're doing that we're doing this so that that's the, that's how i start mm. But with what happened, of course, there was a reason why this protest started, and that was just from hunger, because people are saying they cannot afford the basic necessities of life. But with the government's reaction to this, especially with the security forces, what do you think? Do you think that was the right way, especially if people came out to protest peacefully? And you're hearing that people were, were attacked, lives were lost, and all of that. Do you think the, the, the reaction from the government was needed like that, or they should have done better? Okay, well, again, I, I, this is a very delicate balance I'm going to attempt to, um, to do this morning. Mm. On the one hand, um, what, we, what we call this is a protest. Protest doesn't have to necessarily, you know, be violent, uh, yeah. because that's why in most cases you have to uh, look at protest. You, you define, when you define protest, you define, you put it side by side, uh, violent or, or riot. You see that protest and riot, they're not the same thing. When you're mm. protesting, you carry placards. You move around the streets, let the government know. You register your, your, your anger, you register your grievances mm. through, um, through other means that are, that are peaceful. But it's only when you now find people taking advantage of it and are going to destroy uh, properties, both of government and both of uh, individuals, then you know you, that, that's unacceptable at all. Because if you look at the uh, protest of uh, um, October 2020, uh, the inside protest. I mean, it started very, very well until hoodlums took advantage of that. It started burning, burning um, government, government, uh, government properties. You saw the BRT buses that were raised down, uh, TV station, the TV station that was raised down, and all that. Those are uncalled for. A protest can last even for as long as one month without even a life. Even loss. a year. A protest can last for even two weeks mm -hmm. without a life loss. But because when they do that, the government also has a responsibility to ensure that peace and all that are, are maintained, are maintained in, the, in the society. So wherever you have um, already recorded uh, lives being lost, then you must ask the questions, what led to that? I'm not sure if security agencies will uh, start shooting at, um, at um, uh, peaceful protesters. In Lagos, we, we all witnessed it in Lagos. No life was lost. Um, no soul was injured. And because they decided to you know, uh, compare, to, to compare themselves in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in an orderly way. But over there in the north, in, in Kano, in, 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 in Portisco, where they, where they raised down uh, some, some government vehicles in Portisco, and that's your state and all that. Somebody, you saw somebody in Kano climbing up to, uh, climbing on the, 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 street, the street light and then cutting the thing with colors and machete and all that. So those things, will, government will also not be, want to be seen as being weak. So that's why sometimes, Hello, sir. 
All right, um, Dr. Deji, let me come to you. I want to get your take on the protest so they, far. They come out in that order. They have uh, water okay. guns and other things. But uh, as I said, do uh, we do, we do well to, to allow you to resort to uh, a riot and, and then a destruction of the uh, property. Yeah, of course, a protest and a riot, they're two different things. And I'm sure um, when this started out, nobody expected it to turn this way, even though the government has been a bit wary, saying that, you know, they did not even want protests in the first place um, because sometimes it could get hijacked. And that was just the fear. And, of course, we've seen things that have happened in Kanu, uh, is, which is quite unfortunate. But I know that in Lagos, the commissioner of police was even there as well, saying they were going to protect protesters, which was great. But I want to come to you, Dr. Deji, what is your take with this whole protest? And do you think that, you know, all the grievances of the people have been registered to the government? Do you think they understand what is going on now and the severity of what is going on? Well, my take on the protest is the protest is timely based on the condition that we found ourselves. Mm. Because it seems to appear that people around the president have been shielding him from the reality and goings on in the society. We have largely from what I can call um, an effective cabal around the president, whereby the, most of the news they feed him is always political. And the reason is not perfect because they have come to realize that the president is a power-oriented politician. A power-oriented opposition is somebody that cherishes power. Giving power, he wants more power. Giving more power, he still wants more power. Mm -hmm. So that is why when people are protesting, mm -hmm. people will go to the president and say, oh, they are protesting because people that lost the election are not, uh, you know, have not yet um, get over that loss. So they want to try and remove you from office. And what do you expect from a power-oriented politician? We definitely believe that, oh, it's true. They want to remove me from office. But the reality are so very clear. Like Charles said, who would ever think that a time will come in this country whereby you can buy a cuba of yam for 10,000 naira, and every blessed day, the price of goods and services keeps skyrocketing to the extent yeah. that it seems as if, you know, that is just our faith in Nigeria, that that's how things will be going. So the voice of the protesters at this point in time is a voice of reason, is a voice of checkmating, is a voice of check and balances that no things can't continue this way government needs to do something and since people cannot communicate to the president in some in, in a way and manner that he would listen then protest evolve protest is a way of breaking the barrier of communication the bureaucratic complexity that the common man the average man cannot have and these people have lost confidence in their representative so they have decided that oh when we protest when we go all out and the news and media is carrying the news of the protest then if you get to the years of the president and the president will know that things need to be done so i support the protest will i said i think it is timely it is a means of checkmating the government although i don't quite agree with some of the um, demands of the protesters i think they should be making an amendment to their demand in terms of cross subsidy removal. If you say, okay, government should return the cross subsidy that was removed, well, I don't totally agree with that because every, every of the candidates campaigned with the removal of cross subsidy, and it is only the power that is benefiting from this. But, but what I would have loved is if they campaign that, okay, if you want this cross subsidy to be maintained, Governments have the supreme power of checkmating and to um, take violence. So if you don't want any kind of protest and you don't want Nigeria to be agitated, now begin to go after the cabal that benefited from the cost of city fraud. So I would have not if the demand of the protesters has been prosecution of the cabal that benefited from the cost of city fraud. You know, rather than say that they should return back the subsidy that was removed. Other than that, the protest is very timely. If not, the cost of goods and services will just keep rising. And as someone said yesterday, 30,000 Naira in, in 2019, 
is more valuable now than the 70 naira that it did paid in 2024. That yeah. is just within a space of four years. So Nigerians have no choice. Protests have to occur. And now that the protests have occurred, then I think if the government will now know that, oh, maybe they are not taking some surprise and be able to take action. Mm. Hopefully this, this serves as a wake-up call. But Charles, I want to hear from you. So the president made a speech yesterday um, and he talked about listening to the people that, you know, the government, they've heard us loud and clear. Um, we should, you know, cease to protest right now, leave room for dialogue. Um, but I want to get your take. What did you think about the president's speech and what were some things you think he probably left out and did not really talk about? Okay, well, I, I, first of all, I, I studied English language and I have uh, a postgraduate diploma in advanced grammar, English language. So yesterday, when I looked at it, I looked at the text, I subjected it to text linguistics. And you see, what I, what I was able to look at is that uh, I saw a president who started well from, I think he, it was about, eight, about 38 paragraph uh, uh, speech. Mm. In the first 11 paragraph, he tried to walk him his way into the heart of, of Nigeria, which was very good. But again, after that, he sounded very boastful, uh, talking about what they have done, how they have uh, spent so much amount of money doing it. But you see, if you don't, if you, uh, when you, it's, it's good for you to tell us what, uh, just like uh, Dr. Uh, they said, he said that um, there are people who may be telling the president that uh, they want to sit him. And if you have a, a power hungry, hungry president, uh, you will always fall for that trick and want to do everything in order to retain his power over there. So it is only when he delved into that, but I think it's paragraph 2930, if I recall, mm -hmm. where he mentioned what they have done in terms of agricultural policy that will ease, uh, that will bring about, uh, that will address their food security. He talked about fertilizer big into farmers you talk about uh, the importation of um, of uh, this uh, farm implement including tractors from brazil from belarus and all that this, these are good news they're actually uh, good policies you know but again um how do you a portion of my own expectation just like professor what is what said question I'm, I'm going to ask is that if you do all those things you bring all the agriculture policy you're giving uh, uh fertilizer to farmers Farmers who give fertilizer to, they have no access to their farm because yeah. when they get in there, the, the, the herdsmen are waiting for them to either take their lives or even, even do harm, even do bodily harm or whatever to them. So if on the one hand you are doing all these things, then you are not clearing the, 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 the forest and all that uh, of, of uh, those, those criminals, then, then it, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a no brainer at all. But if the president has said specifically that, well, as we are doing this, as we are pushing all those things in order to address uh, posting key security, I'm going to be asking the GOCs of uh, all the, wherever you have all this military formation, to move into the forest and clear the forest of all these criminal elements and all the, so that farmers will have access to this farmland so that they can uh, begin to, I mean, uh, we are approaching it, I mean, this is one thing we are approaching the harvest season, so that the next planting season will begin to see uh, what farmers can do. And once we get to the harvest season, we now begin to see the fruit of this labor. But it is say so. You are giving uh, farmers and they can't go to the plant and all that. So what I always say so, some of us who are, who are, who are trained speech writers, when you are writing a speech, either you are making a public speech or so, you must be very careful not to be ambiguous, not to sound ambiguous. Mm. You must be clearly, you must state something, somebody say clearly, don't, don't, don't use a generalized statement in order to address it. You say, okay, we are doing something. Well, you have to be very specific and be very specific. We are, you let people know exactly what you are doing or in point A, point B, point C, point C. You didn't do that. Okay, it's the issue of... Uh, of uh, fuel scarcity, the issue of uh, uh, the, the the tariff hike. He didn't mention all those things, so he just generalized. It's a generalized statement, as far as I'm concerned. And generalized statement in most cases it doesn't work to assuage the feelings of the people. The grievances are still there, and even though he has tried to, you know, encapsulate whatever he's doing in use the right statement that is uh, captured in the 38 uh, page, uh, uh, 10 to 38 uh, paragraph uh, speech. For me, it fell short of my own personal expectation because it generalized rather than being specific. Mm. I, I totally agree with you. And a lot of people had come out to say, you know what, the, the president did not, his address did not really meet the demands or talk about the concerns of the people. And in fact, Femi Falano, who's a human rights um, lawyer, had said that that address fell short. And he said he did not even address um, anything about the fuel subsidy that is being talked about. And I know that you just um, highlighted on that, Dr. Deji, saying that we cannot totally 
remove fuel subsidy. But in other countries, several things are being subsidized for the people. Um, how do you think that the president can let the people know that they understand, um, you know, what we're going through, even if they do not have to remove the fuel subsidy totally? And, you know, it is being said that there is a quasi subsidy at the moment, because if you're looking at the dollar rate at the mo right now, um, if we're supposed to be buying that commodity, it's not supposed to be stable for a while. It's supposed to always fluctuate. So there is a quasi subsidy. But how do you think that the president or the government can tackle these issues that these protesters have, especially when it comes to the fuel subsidy that has been removed? How best can we go about it? Dr. DJ, please. I think um, the first thing is, number one, government should be able to realize that governance exists for the people. You see, when you are in government, your interest as a government, especially in the democratic system, doesn't really matter. What matters is the interest of the people. And that's why Bentham and Mills have started that government exists to fulfill the, the interest of the largest number of people in the society. So if the interest of government falls into the minority, you still have to go with majority interest as a government. But the Nigerian government, successful government, are still to realize it. And one of the ways that government can do this is by communication. For instance, the speech given by the president, I expect that the president would have come out from his high horse, even before the protest. And not only gave a speech, but maybe with Nigerians, because the protest is like a referendum on the performance of his government. So even if you take the president to conduct what I can call like a mini rally within the six geopolitical zones, even if he takes him to be dancing, this training, something, he's in Gongo or something, you know, I would have expected the president to have gone all out. But he sat on his high horse, not until things went out of hand. And I think people in the presidency allow that protest because they think they've got all areas covered. They think, oh, did they touch the necessary groups and people that, that are relevant to be able to cop the protest. But you can't cop a protest that is organic when people are angry and are hungry. And I think that, that in this moment of time in our country, that Nigeria, in, in, in this kind of country that we have enormous mineral resources, can still be talking of hunger. So that means that we have retrogressed rather than progress. Other countries are talking of great things. We are still talking of hunger. So even if you look at mass hierarchy of needs, I think um, the the stage of food comes first. So we are still in that first stage before we realize that, you know, you know, it's when you are eating that you realize that you need food, that you realize that you are unsecured. So we are still at the first level, which is very, very sad. Even countries that are not up to the standard of Nigeria are not at that level. So governments have to sit up and make sure that there is communication. For instance, the, the speech of the president, I want to see whether there will be live cameras. I want to see a president that will take live questions from media. I don't. Mm. Hello, Dr. Deji. Okay, so when Dr. Deji talks about, you know, live cameras and stuff, it made me chuckle a little bit because I'm like, I don't know if that's even going to happen. Um, we're still seeing speeches that are quite ambiguous. We're seeing speeches that, you know, do not give sukkah to the people. So I don't know if that's even going to happen in the first place. But let's just hear from someone else. We're now joined with Comrade Bedford Berefa, is the Ijo Youth Council spokesman. Good morning, Comrade. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Comrade Bedford. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I'm sure you've heard of, um, you know, what we've been talking about, talking about the, the president's speech, the body language of the government. I want to get your take on this. I want to even know what's happening in um, Bielsa at the moment. So can you give us any update on what the protest has been like in Bielsa? All right, um, uh, the protests in Bayasa have been, you know, Bayasa came out in mass, you know, against the order of uh, the governor, Governor Bayasa, who then kicked against the protests, you know, and but uh, Bayasa came out in mass. I joined them, but the victims attacked the and even two persons were killed in, in the process, allegedly killed 
from the process of diversity to at this stance in Bayasa. Bayasa is quite calm, quite peaceful as a result of the violence. You know, in the Niger Delta, we sit, we have seen violence, and we don't want violence any longer in our territories. So that first day, after that first day, the protest has been very, very quiet, low key, people only murmur in the houses and don't come out to protest. But we have made our stance clear. The IYC joined the protest. We are another uh, medium we did. We did the press release, we joined the first big protest, and we, we, stated our, we stated our point and our agenda, the reasons we needed to also join the protest. Beyond hunger, this the problem that we are faced with in Nigeria is, is, a, policy, is a policy issue, you know, and the president's, uh, the president's speech, uh, anyways, uh, uh, give it to him, he has his ways with words, anyways, uh, but uh, to our own uh, analysis and analogy, it does not necessarily answer the begging questions of hunger, the begging questions of first subsidy uh, uh, replacement, the begging question of you know uh, refinery rejuvenating. Our refineries are more important, so the political politics, uh, you know, 99% complete and all of that. That is the issue that has brought us to this point, or to our knees begging, where Nigerians are, are stressed to the elastic limit and are saying, no, we are rebounding to ensure that uh, you know, the country works. That's every prayer and prayer. Of, of every Nigeria, even the presidency. But obviously, from what I've seen, the presidency has as not, is, you know, is believed, no, not let us use a, a, a sad word, is necessarily running out of ideas on how to, uh, you know, make Nigeria work. And those people surrounding the president, of course, you can obviously see that they are after their, their stomach and not necessarily the collective progress of our nature. That's the what we have seen so far. But the protest is continuing in other, you know, parties like the RIC. The RIC is not only in Bayasa, we are in Delta, we are in all the Niger Delta states. You know, Bayasa is still continuing, River State, the protest also continues, still continuing, the protest is still ongoing, and every other state, but Bayasa is quite peculiar uh, for now uh, uh, a first group of uh, uh, the protest but the governor reached out to all uh, you know the coordinators of, of the protesting coordinators and uh, uh, there was a live broadcast where he also expressed his opinion and shared ideas and said you know we're going to make a uh, work where we are watching and coping those are rhetorics that we are very over because our desire is to let Nigeria work that's our yeah. uh, 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 let policy issues be set in put in place because every governor, the government has everything that is needed to make Nigeria work. Mm. We have all the infrastructure. We have is it food security. Food insecurity did not just start now. Food insecurity started when Boko Haram and Enslaved started, you know, destroying farmlands and all of that. This is the aftermath. What we're experiencing is the aftermath of 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 uh, such an uh, invasion without, uh, you know, nipping it to the board by the government. And that is what we are faced with. We are faced with seeking food security. We are faced with, you know, transportation issues. We are faced with, you know, life is becoming difficult. It's over forty percent. Everything is just on the rise, according to the protocol. My protocol brother. His problem is that food is reducing by the day. The cost of living is high. That is the problem. The government should address the issues, bits of the issues, and not necessarily dancing, you know, around and to, in, so, in, you know, so trying I, to. I want to confirm. Um, in, I know that your governor, um, Governor Deary, has you know spoken to people, and what he said was, you need to have room for dialogue, and dialogue is the only way um, for us to, you know, just get make headway really. And one other thing he touched on was saying they're going to put solutions when it comes to food um, price hikes. Now, with all of that and the promises that he has made to the people of Bielsa, that's just Bielsa now as one state. Are people still going out to protest regardless, saying, you know what, well, we're not going to believe whatever you're saying, and they want to continue the protest, or the protest is being suspended right now? And do you even believe him? Do you think something is going to be done with the promises he has made? Hello, Comrade Bedford. Hello? Uh, I think we just lost Comrade Bedford's audio. But um, I'd like to come back to you, Charles. So with, the, with what has happened and the body language of the president now, what is the way forward? How do you think we can move forward from all of this where oh. we do not have to protest? Can you hear me? Hello, Charles. Me? Okay. 
Comrade Bedford, can you hear me? Okay, so I was asking, I, I are people hear. still going out to protest regardless of what the um, governor has said, the governor of Bielsa, regardless yeah, of what he has said? The government, uh, you know, came through very, very early. You know, he, he has been against the protest. You know, he didn't want the protest to hold initially, and he has done a, 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 a We're having issues with Comrade Bedford's audio. Um, but let me just come to you, Charles, now. Like I was asking earlier, what is the way forward? How can we move forward to, towards a better Nigeria? I know that a lot of people do not even want the protest in the first place. Because if we had a nation, you know, that had systems in place, systems that work, we would not even have to come out to protest. But what is the way forward now? What do you think the government can do better to avoid this protest? Because you rightly said that it could have been avoided in the first place. But here we are now. We've seen what the protest has done. We've seen people lose their lives. We've seen, you know, properties being destroyed. We've seen all of these things that have happened. How can we move forward and what can the government do better to ensure that we do not come back here or even worse? That, uh, when you have a leader, I mean, in, 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 in leadership, there are two schools in leadership. Two schools actually beg leaders. There is the school of politics and the school of power. So you now look at and yeah. you, know, yeah. is, you have uh, uh, leaders who are trained to look at how to govern, how to put the right people in place, how to ensure that policies are just towards, you know, um, as well the things of the people and also trying to get the people to get them out of poverty as like, possible. Then that's the school of politics. And then they also look at the some of people who they think that can help to drive these policies to meet the needs of the people. That is not political, it's full of power. You have people who like to get to power at all costs. Once they get in there, they look for people who will continue to put them there to sustain their power base, and people who will also look at if there are any oppositions, they ensure that there are no opposition against their leadership at all. So when you look at these two schools I have mentioned, it now depends on which one you think that this president belongs to, whether it's a a student of politics or a student of power, but that remains to be seen. The thing that, back to your question about what you think needs to be done, is that when you get to um, advanced leadership, advanced uh, economies where they have people who are put in power, who are that of school of politics, what they do is to, from time to time, access the cabinet, access those who they are put in place. Is it the Ministry of Agriculture? If there's a problem with the food security, then they look at what they are doing in that ministry. If the minister who is preparing over the affairs of the minister, well, what they do is to find a way to either either ask him to ship up or shape up, either ask him to shape up or shape up. They look at even the history, they look at all these ministries. So what is the problem we have now? We really look at the his cabinet and see those ministers that are missing so that you can inject into the system those things that can help his intentions don't you think that can drive his policies that will benefit the people, not just having people who are going to be, who are going to be singing his praises to him, just like uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Dick said earlier. He looked for people who will tell him that people want to kick him out of power. So because he, for me, he is he seems to be a, a graduate of the school of, of, of power, then he will listen to those who are telling him that they want to kick him out, out of power. But a little president, a dynamic, a dynamic a, a, a leader will look for people who will do the job for him because it's a collective thing. Mm -hmm. So I would say the president should look at the cabinet, review their performances, depending on the ministers, and see those who are misfit so that he can begin to reject them so that he can look for people who can indeed meet the aspirations of the people. I think that's the, what I think the president should do first. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charles. Um, thank you for coming and sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you, Dr. Deji Omashala, um, also for coming. And thank you, Comrade Bedford, for coming and giving, all, giving us all of these updates and what you think as well. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you.
All right, we'll be speaking with Dr. D.G. Omashala. He's a political analyst. We'll also be speaking with Charles Ideho. He's a broadcaster and communication strategist. And finally, we'll also be speaking with Comrade Bedford Berefa. He is the Ijo Youth Council spokesman. And we've just been talking about the protests understanding updates that have been going on and what needs to be done as well when it comes to the reactions from the government.